this building behind me, we've got a family of peregrine falcons living up there. So you occasionally find dead birds, which is anatomically interesting, at the bottoms of the buildings. Hello, back for more. This week, I've been talking about more head and neck anatomy, a lot of oral cavity stuff actually, to a couple of groups. So the last couple of weeks we've been in this area, we're still not going very far away from it. Uh, I want to talk about the temporomandibular joint, right here. The temporomandibular joint is an interesting joint. It's um, it's a synovial joint, it looks like a simple hinge joint when you look at our plastic skulls and they do that, these chattering skulls. Um, but in fact in us, it's a lot more mobile and interesting than that. Um, so let's have a look. It's also a, a common site of pain in this region and pain in the face and particularly around here can be very tricky to work out what's going on because you've got a number of structures around here which could be causing that pain because the ear is right next to it. So actually often pain from the temporomandibular joint from maybe temporomandibular dysfunction um, is often, is in fact very commonly ascribed to being ear pain, um, more commonly than it is what it actually is, if you see what I mean. So let's have a look at the temporomandibular joint, let's have a look at the bones involved, the structures of the joint, how the joint moves, and then the muscles that move that joint, which are the muscles of mastication, all right? Okay, so first off then, what parts of the mandible are we interested in here? So this is the mandible, it's actually got a lot of shape to it, when you look at it, this whole bone here is the mandible and we can see the lower teeth are attached to it. Um, this is the bit we're interested in here then. This is the angle of the mandible here. This is the ramus of the mandible. Ramus means branch. And we come across the word ramus elsewhere in the body. Um, and then we've got these two processes here. This is the condylar process. So this is the condyle that's articulating actually at the temporomandibular joint. So that's the condylar process. This is the coronoid process here. And in between the two, we have this notch. So that's the coronoid process. And what bone is this articulating with here. But it's not easy to see on the white skull. If we grab this skull here, we can see a couple of the muscles of mastication, so let's spin that around. Right, there's that condylar process of the mandible there, right? So it's articulating with the temporal bone here. And look, look at these bones. This is the maxilla. This is the zygomatic bone. This is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. So these are together forming the zygomatic arch or the zygomatic complex. So it's a complex of bones here, right? Uh, and then this is the condylar process of the mandible is articulating with the temporal bone, which is why it gets called the temporomandibular joint. Obvious, isn't it? Whereas the plastic scale can only we can depress the mandible and elevate the mandible, depression and elevation, and this is then acting as a hinge joint. And the hinge joint bit is obvious, and the temporomandibular joint is a hinge joint. You can also do other things with your temporomandibular joint, can't you? Because as well as depression and elevation, no. you can also protrude your chin, can't you? That's protrusion in the mandible. So the whole mandible here is, is protruding anteriorly. So that's protrusion. And then when you pull it back, that's retraction. And in fact, when you open your jaw really wide, what you're doing there is you're depressing your mandible and you're protruding it. And that's actually a point where you're, <laughs> if you do a really big yawn, there is a risk of um, dislocating the temporomandibular joint or uh, locking your joint open. Also, the temporomandibular joint is kind of weakest when you're doing that. So a blow to the mandible uh, uh, when your mouth is open, when the temporomandibular joint is, well, when the mandible is depressed and protruded, that's when you're most likely to um, dislocate the temporomandibular joint. A blow to the side of the mandible when the mandible is depressed and uh, protruded, right? That's its weakest state. 
We'll get back to the structure of the joint in a minute though. Um, so protrusion and retraction, we'll talk about the muscles of mastication that control this as well. Um, but that means that there must be more to this joint here than what we see on the plastic skull, which is just the hinge joint. So how does it slide? Well, it has a little bit of uh, a special structure within it. So this is a synovial joint. It's a fairly typical synovial joint. It's lined with articular cartilage. It's got a synovial capsule around it. So it's filled with synovial fluid, makes it all nice and, you know, easy to move, friction free, it's all well looked after, the synovial membranes making the synovial fluid and yada yada yada. But it has also, let me tear up this pink post-it note, it has an articular disc within it. Right, so that articular disc means that you can not just hinge your mandible, but you can also protrude it, it'll slide anteriorly a little way, right? So that is the articular disc it's a bit like a meniscus, kind of is a meniscus, just a fibro cartilage disc, we call it an articular disc, separating the two articular surfaces within the temporomandibular joint. And what it means is that then the, the mandible can hinge, but it can also slide anteriorly within that joint. And the condylar process of the mandible is held to the temporal bone by the capsule of the synovial joint. Some of that capsule is thickened to form um, a temporomandibular ligament, but also the muscles of mastication, we have a sling around here, are all holding it in place. So the temporomandibular joint can hinge and it can slide, but not too much, just a little way, it's held in place. So that takes us into the muscles of mastication and one of my favorite models, Big Head. Big Head's awesome, he's a big head. Um, so there are four muscles of mastication. I reckon you know at least two of them. Um, and you can palpate them here as you, as, you, to, as you elevate your mandible, as you clench your teeth together, you can feel this muscle here contracting and you can feel this muscle here contracting. Mm -hmm. That's masseter and that's temporalis. Um, there we go. So we can see there's masseter, right? So look, there's big head. Here's masseter here. So masseter is, is this powerful muscle that can elevate the mandible so we can bite really really hard on things and we can see that it's coming from that this is uh, the zygomatic process of the temporal bone here and this is the zygomatic bone here so it's coming from these two bones and passing down and inserting into the ramus of the mandible laterally um, and it's a pretty tough muscle um, and its main job is to elevate the mandible. You can see the temporomandibular joint here. This muscle here, this is temporalis, um, and we'd have to take off masseter. If we take off masseter, we can see temporalis inserting here. That's why there's a coronoid process anterior to the temporomandibular joint, because that's where the temporalis muscle inserts into. That gives it an advantage of leverage, so when you when you contract temporalis, look, it's, it's pulling an, on the coronoid process of the mandible and elevating the mandible forcefully, which lets you bite and chew with great power. And it's passing deep to the bones of the zygomatic arch here. And it's coming from the temporal region. Oh, Lord, you're heavy. Uh, big head's heavy. Let's have a look on Wee Man. Uh, spin you around, Wee Man. Look, there we go, see? Here's the temporalis muscle on Wee Man. This is the temporal region as we've talked about before. Um, so this is the, we've got the parietal bone up here and the temporal bone, we've got the temporal fossa, the muscles attaching all the way around here and the fibers are running in lots of different directions to insert into the coronoid process here. This means that not only is it gonna elevate the mandible, but if the mandible is protruded, it'll pull it back in again. Okay, so whereas, uh, so masseter will elevate the mandible, Temporalis will also elevate the mandible, but if the mandible is protruded, temporalis will also retract it, will also pull it back into, you know, that position. Temporalis and masseter. Um, let's move you out of the way. So you can, like I say, you can palpate your own temporalis muscles, but next time you pat the head of a dog, or a wolf, or a bear, if you do that sort of thing, um, 
you probably feel on the top of their head a ridge. So there's a ridge running along the top of their cranium. Their temporalis muscles run around the side of the skull and insert all the way into that ridge. Their temporalis muscles are bigger, more powerful. They've got more bone to insert into, which is why carnivorous animals like that that need to like grab hold of their prey and with huge biting force and tear lumps out of it, um, those carnivores have got really big temporalis muscles. So that temporalis muscle is a really big, really, really powerful elevator of the mandible. It gives you loads of biting power. So those are two muscles of mastication. There are two more muscles of mastication. One of them we can see here, right? So I said that this is temporalis inserting into the coronoid process. Do you see those muscle fibers under there? Right? That is the lateral pterygoid muscle. Um, there are two pterygoid muscles. If there's a lateral pterygoid muscle, there must be a medial pterygoid muscle. Yep, absolutely. We can see this one because it's lateral. Um, and can you see the fibers are running in that direction? So it's attached here to the temporomandibular joint itself, to the condylar process of the mandible. And anteriorly, it's attached to the, the pterygoid plates of the sphenoid bone and stuff like that. What it means is if the fibers are running in this, this direction, then this is the muscle that really helps you protrude your mandible, right? Because it's gonna pull the condylar process of the mandible anteriorly. So that's gonna help you protrude your mandible. So that's the lateral pterygoid muscle. Um, so this is the, the red bone here, or most of the red bone, <laughs> is the sphenoid bone. We've also got the palatine bones here. Now the sphenoid bones have got these, these wings of bone on them. That's where terry comes from, terry wings, right? Pterodactyl, winged, anyway. So terry wings, these winged sheets of bone, those are the, that's the, those are the pterygoid plates. Um, that's what the pterygoid muscles are attaching to, which is why they get called pterygoid. So if that's the lateral pterygoid muscle, you can see the medial pterygoid. The medial pterygoid muscle is here, right? Do you see? So if that's, well, we take master off, haven't we? But if masseter runs there and it attaches into the, the lateral part of the ramus of the mandible, here, if we look on the other side, if we look on the, there's the angle of the mandible there and the ramus of the mandible is coming up here. That's the medial pterygoid muscle here. And the medial pterygoid muscle is running up at an angle. So it's running from here up to those pterygoid plates. Um, so it's running in, in that direction. So you can see how this will also help. This is like forming a sling with the masseter muscle, holding the mandible in place, holding, helping support the temporomandibular joint. And if, if the medial pterygoid muscle contracts, then that's also going to elevate the mandible. And as well as elevating the mandible, it's also gonna to contribute to protrusion a little bit, right, because of that angle that it's pulling at. So if temporalis is pulling that way, and it's gonna help with retraction of the mandible, then on the other side there, the medial pterygoid muscle is running in that direction, so it's gonna help with protrusion of the mandible. That said, so the four muscles of mastication, we can talk about the individual actions that they have. Um, of course, we don't just protrude and retract and elevate and depress the mandible. Oh, that's the point. What muscles depress the mandible? Well, it's mostly gravity, isn't it? It's like, uh, gravity, is that depresses the mandible. But also you've got the hyoid bone in here, right? And the strap muscles of the neck. These strap muscles of the neck, suprahyoid and infrahyoid will help you depress your mandible if you need to, either if you're very surprised or if you're in space. All right, so the, the strap muscles of the neck depress the mandible. We've talked about that, but those aren't muscles of mastication, those are muscles of the neck. There are four muscles of mastication and we've talked about them. Masseter, temporalis, medial pterygoid, lateral pterygoid. Um, of course, as I, was, as I was saying, we are, um, you know, when we, when we bite and we chew food, and even when I'm talking, my, my jaw is probably fairly level. It's mostly my muscles of facial expression that I'm using to talk to you. But when we're chewing, we tend to, I don't know whether you've noticed, but you tend to chew on one side, you've probably got a preferred side, and you, you bite and you chew and you use different teeth, which means you use all of these muscles in mastication, kind of um, at different times and in opposition to, to change the level of the jaw. So you can bite on one side, but you've got a gap on the other side, and chew and move food around and that sort of thing, right? So we, like most muscles in the body, we pull all of them together to produce the actions that we want to make. So those are the muscles of mastication. Um, two more things, temporomandibular joint pain 
and uh, the innovation of these muscles. Okay, innovation. We're in the head. Whenever we're talking about head and neck stuff, when we talk about innovation, we talk about cranial nerves, our 12 friends, aren't we? Um, what cranial nerve innovates the muscles of mastication? Um, it's cranial nerve five, the trigeminal nerve. Now you should know, or you may know, that the trigeminal nerve is the major sensory nerve of the face. That's its main job, is sensory to the part of the face, right? That's what it does. But it does have a motor function. And its main motor function is to innovate the four muscles of mastication. It innovates another muscle as well. Answers on a postcard or in the comments below. But let's just focus on what we're talking about today. So the trigeminal nerve, we can see again on big head. There's, whoo, there's the trigeminal nerve there. And there's the trigeminal ganglion. And at the trigeminal ganglion, we see three branches forming from the trigeminal nerve. And those three branches are the ophthalmic branch, the maxillary branch, and the mandibular branch. And those are very sensibly named. The ophthalmic branch is going to go up here, the maxillary branch is going to go through here, and the mandibular branch is going to go down here. Which branch do you think innervates the muscles of mastication? It's the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve. Of course it is. Uh, it also gets called, you know, cranial nerve five in Roman numerals. So you might see cranial nerve V3 um, as the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve. So that's the nerve that innervates the muscles of mastication. Good. And there we are, that's it. Those are the movements of the mandible, the structure of the temporomandibular joint, the muscles of mastication and their innervation. The reason this is interesting, as I alluded to at the beginning, is that um, people do experience pain here. And a lot of people also experience clicking I got a clicky jaw, it's kind of both sides. And that clicking gets attributed to that articular disc, so kind of happens as you, as you depress your mandible and protrude it a, a little bit, right? The articular disc and the condylar process of the mandible, they, they kind of slip anteriorly and posteriorly. And that's probably what the clicking is, is, is that articular disc is not sliding quite as smoothly or as nicely as it used to be. In most people, there's no pain, it's not a problem, Mm, probably won't get any worse, I think, maybe, probably. Um, but you do get arthritic problems with this joint as well. You get changes to the articular disc, you get wear and tear, and you can get, you can get um, arthritic changes to the cartilage there. And that usually is associated with pain. Um, and you might also get locking of the joint when you really, really depress your mandible and protrude it. Like I say, depression and protrusion is the weakest point. You might get locking and it's difficult to close the mandible. Um, but also not only do people get pain from the temporomandibular joint, which tends to get radiated to the ear and mistaken for ear pain, you've also got the salivary glands around here as well. So if you get a stone in the duct from the submandibular gland, that gland will swell. That'll cause pain. That's really close by as well, right? So you've got a number of structures around here which can cause pain. And if you've got to work out which one is causing the problem, you need some solid knowledge of anatomy of this region, which is what we're doing. Um, but also you can get muscular pain, so those muscles of mastication can get pain. And people who grind their teeth and clench their jaws, people in you know stressful jobs, stressful situations, uh, long-term stress will often lead to this grinding of teeth and this pain around the TMJ, sometimes pain within the teeth themselves. And of course, the enamel of the teeth is getting worn away. Um, and also then the, the, the muscles, the, the muscles of mastication themselves through overuse can develop, can develop pathology and pain in the muscles. So you've got to consider all of these things if somebody presents with pain in this area, plus the ear and all the other stuff we haven't talked about. So there we go. Um, whoo the TMJ, or the temporomandibular joint. Um, a fun piece of anatomy, and pretty important to us without us realizing most of the time. Imagine if you didn't have one. Or arthritis of the TMJ. Ooh. Keep you quiet, wouldn't it? Well, you can keep me quiet. That's it. All right, see you next time.